I'm going to start again. <laughs> okay. So Ashit has been teaching yoga, pranayam, and meditation for almost 15 years. He's the leading exponent of Yoga Sutras of Patanjali as well as many other topics. And he's invited to give talks and presentations in renowned institutions in India, which talk, which basically teach Sanskrit. So he is very good at it. And he also is invited abroad. He's been to Indonesia and Germany and places like that to talk, give talks on Yoga Sutras as well as teach yoga. Uh, he um, is also invited to co big corporate companies like Siemens and Cummins and companies like that to teach yoga as well as give talks about yoga and neuroscience, depression, and how it impact, how yoga <coughs> positively impacts uh, <coughs> depression. He's a certified counselor and psychotherapist. And then the another hidden talent he always does not want me to tell people is that he is a great actor. He's acted in many uh, TV serials, uh, Marathi TV serials in India. And he has also acted in um, short, small roles in uh, movies, as well as there is a very popular series called Crime Patrol. <laughs> Everybody told you, Ashid, you should not be in Crime Patrol. <laughs> you don't belong there. So he has, he has been a good actor and he has been given a gift of voice. So without any further delay, I'm going to let Ashit talk now. So uh, if anybody wants to say anything, otherwise typically I mute everyone. I hope you all have your word document to refer to. So shall I, I think most of them are already muted anyways. So. Is Milin there? Sorry. No, no. I wonder if Milin should be reminded because he is usually always early. I don't know why he's not here yet. Okay. Can you send him a text? I don't have his phone number. Okay. All right. Uh, I told people already, but yesterday, usually that doesn't happen, but yesterday I was frozen. My laptop was frozen. Hopefully that will not happen today. But if it happened, I have another, happens, I have another laptop ready. I'll quickly log out and log into the other laptop and hopefully everyone would be able to log back in again. Yeah. Yesterday teaching your class. Yeah. You have to run updates on Zoom every time we use Zoom. Uh, whenever they ask me to, I do it, but I don't think it was Zoom. It was my laptop. The cursor oh. froze. Everything froze. I could not oh, do anything. Okay. Never mind. So, yeah, yeah. Because the rest of the Zoom class was continuing without me. <laughs> I see. Okay. Yeah. Right. Shall we begin? My, yes, please. Yes, please. <clears throat> my dear seekers, my fellow seekers. Are you seekers? Because if you're seekers, then only you are going to get it. There is a very beautiful shloka from the Upanishads. Naya matma pravachaneno labhyo na medhaya na bhavna shute yamavaisya vrunte tena labhyaha Tasya Esha Atma Vivrunte Tanam Swa Nayam Atma Pravachanena Labhyo You are not going to get it by giving discourses like me. I am not going to get it by giving a discourse. Namedhaya, howsoever intelligent you are, your IQ might be very high. You are not going to get it. The Bahuna Shrutena, you may hear many people like me. You're not going to get it. Yamavaishavante Tena Labhya. But if you are a seeker, the intensity of your seeking will decide whether he will reveal himself unto you or not. So it is all 
how intense you are, how dedicated you are. Are you seeking like a drowning man seeks air? Are you seeking with that intensity? Or are you seeking with some ulterior motive? Is it just a passing seeking? That, oh, let's look into this. What is this? If we get it, it is good. If we don't get it, okay. Then you will never get it. That is the shloka. That's what the Upanishad tells us. There is a very beautiful prayer before uh, the Kena Upanishad begins. We are going to recite that prayer. It is Sahana Vavatu. Huh? Do you want to close windows? I hear a lot of traffic. I hear a lot of traffic. No, know. all the windows are closed. closed? Okay. Okay, people are going to be I'm afraid you'll have to bear with it. Okay. Because all the windows are closed and uh, the traffic is there. So Thanks. we can't, we cannot help it. I, I believe my talk will be uh, so engrossing that you will not hear that traffic. I hope that. So, and this, this is India, so there is a lot of noise pollution here. And we have got used to it. So, Sahana Bhavatu. Protect us together as we study. Sahano Bhunattu. Us means the teacher and the students. They are praying together. Sahano Bhunattu. Let us maybe enjoy the fruits of this study together. Sahaviryam Karvavahi. May our study be full of vigor. Tejasvina Vadita Mastu. May our study radiate with brilliance. Ma Vidvishavahi. Let there be no disputations amongst us. And then it says, Om Shanti. Shanti means peace. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Why do we say it three times? It is to appease the three forces which are bound to or inclined to disturb us during our studies. The first Shanti is for natural forces, the forces of nature, like rain, thunder, wildfires, tsunamis, volcanoes, earthquakes. So protect us from them. The second Shanti is the appeasement for the forces which operate in your vicinity. People, animals, events, situations around you. Protect us from them as we study. And the third Shanti is protect us from our own bodies and mind, our anxieties, our depressions, our worries. Let them and physical maybe ailments. Let them not bother us during this study. And then the Upanishad begins. A very beautiful prayer. And Om. We are going to talk about Om later. Why Om? What is Om? So uh, you can listen to the prayer. 
Those who know the prayer, they can say it. Upanishad means clear, succinct knowledge, complete knowledge, complete wisdom. Upa means close, ni means nishesh, nothing remains after that. Shab is knowledge. There are more than 200 Upanishads. Some are small, some are very large. It's a very, very large body of knowledge. To cover it in eight sessions is in fact ludicrous. It is absurd, incongruent, laughable. But there are, out of those, the body of 200, there are about 10 Upanishads, 10 to 12 Upanishads, which are considered the core, very, very important. So we are going to, I have selected a few from them. We are going to begin with Isha Vasya Upanishad, the most well-known and very, very famous Upanishad. It is a small Upanishad. It has got only 18 mantras or 18 shlokas. I believe you, all of you have the write-up printed out in front of you. So what do Upanishads tell us? If you look at the foreword which are written, their theme revolves around the four famous aphorisms known as the Mahavakyas or the great statements which appear one in each of the four Vedas. Upanishads, they are also called Vedanta. Anta means end because they appear at the end of Vedas and they contain the essence of Vedas. So these four Mahavakyas are as you can read in front of you. Prajyanam Brahma. Pure consciousness is Brahma. Upanishads is the seeking of Brahma. What is Brahma? You call it God. You call it Lord. You call it Father. You call it Allah. You call it Ishwar. You can give it any name. But it is the subjective experience of that power in you which you are going to experience. That is the goal of the Upanishads. The Upanishads want you to experience this Lord, this God, this Ishwar, this Brahma, Upanishads have called it Brahma, which means that which is omnipresent, which is omniscient, and which is omnipotent. So Upanishads want you to experience it inside of you.
we are going to come back to these Mahavakyas as we go ahead in our journey. To begin with Ishavasya, each Upanishad has a Shanti part. That is a, that is a prayer for peace. Each Upanishad has a schema. Some Upanishads are in the form of a story. Some Upanishads are in the form of an intellectual treatise. The stories are very, very, very sweet, very interesting. I'm going to share them with you as we go ahead. Ishavasya Upanishad, as you will know, if you have read the write-up, it is an intellectual treatise. It begins with a very, very famous prayer, Purnam Adaha Purnam Idam. So if you look at that prayer, if you open that page, I think here it's in the front, second page, I think. Okay, here it is. So what is this Rishi, what is this sage saying? He's saying that this outer phenomenal world, the macrocosm, whatever is there around you, the entire universe is full with divine consciousness. And this inner world, that is the microcosm, is also full, filled with divine consciousness. This consciousness has evolved from that consciousness. How did your consciousness come into existence? Did your body come into existence first or your consciousness came into existence first? Or did your consciousness came along with your body? The Upanishad says that consciousness is eternal. There is no birth or death of consciousness. It is always there. The body comes and the body goes. But because we are, the, our consciousness is encased in this body, we think that we are separate. So we are trying to separate something which is inseparable. Our egos, they separate us from the rest of the world. So the mantra here says that having evolved from the former as a seemingly separate entity, the latter is not separate from the former. The divine consciousness that is laden in this entire universe is the same in all of us. At that level, we all are same. There is no difference. This individuality comes later. So to realize this unison, this unification amongst the entire human race is the purpose. And this mantra is Purna Madaha, that is full of divine consciousness. Purna Idam, this, my being, is full of divine consciousness. Although I think that I am separate, I am not, because this consciousness 
has burgeoned from that consciousness. So this is the prayer. And then again, the Rishi says, Shanti, 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 three times. And now, you see, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, these Upanishads, when these sages expressed their experiences, these Upanishads are real life experiences of the sages. There is nothing uh, hypothetical in these Upanishads. It's all their own real life experience as they perceived it. And they have tried to put it into words. They have tried to put into words which is inexplicable. So that is the reason at times Upanishads appear to be very obscure. They are esoteric. They will confuse you. But the central theme, if you understand the central theme, then the expression of various rishis, they'll fall in place and your vision will become clear. Isha vasyam idam sarvam yat kincha jaktyam jagat tena tyaktena bhunjitha ma gridha kasyasvitharam. This is the first mantra of Isha Vasya Upanishad. So the Rishi is saying, Isha Vasyam Idam Sarvam. You can, uh, you can refer to the mantra, wherein I have given the translation of this mantra. All this, whatsoever is there in this constantly changing phenomenal world, is immersed in the Lord or Brahma. You call it Lord, you call it Brahma, call it whatever, it doesn't make a difference. We will call it Brahma because we are following the Upanishads. It is a technical term. Isha Vasim Idam Sarvam, all this, what is all this? All this means everything that your mind can conceive. Also that which your mind cannot conceive. All that which you can see and all that which you cannot see. All that which has been there, all that which is there and all that which would be there, everything that is Sarvam. Which means nothing has escaped it. Everything. May it be physical, may it be metaphysical, may be it be in the physical form, may it be in the mental form, may it be in the thoughts form, may it be in the emotional form, whatever expression is there of this entire manifestation, this whole universe, imaginable universe, unimaginable universe. Everything, it includes everything, is steeped, immersed in Brahma. You see, as we go ahead, you will begin to understand the scope, the scale of Brahma. Yat kincha means whatsoever is there. Jagatyam. Jagatyam means universe, the entire. Jagat means changing. Ever changing. Always changing. Everything in this world is temporal. It is your delusion that you think that something is permanent. Nothing is permanent. Everything is changing. Everything is in a flux. Tena tyaktena bunjitha. Bunjitha means enjoy. 
enjoy that enjoy this changing world go run after it go after your aspirations achieve your goals enjoy but tena tyaktena bunjita enjoy with an attitude of detachment because you cannot attach yourself to anything because everything is changing what will you attach to you are also changing the thing which you want to attach to is also changing so who will attach to whom it is a delusion it is a delusion called or called maya do you you must have heard about the word maya a very famous word people don't know the meaning of maya the meaning of maya ma means not and ya means that not that what you think it is it is not that and this applies to everything not that not that that is maya so the rishi is saying that enjoy this world but enjoy it with an attitude of detachment don't get stuck into it because it is futile it is pointless it is never going to last rather seek your happiness a new happiness in a new moment every moment because everything is changing so isha vasyam idam sarvam yat kinche jaktyam jagat tena tyaktena bhunjitha ma grudha kasya svetthanam do not covet covet anyone's wealth he is talking to us this rishi is talking to us how much do we covet other people's achievements their wealth do we do that do we wish that i wish i had this i wish i had that i wish i had a villa i wish i had this i wish i had that whom does it belong to anyway you think that you are possessing something how long are you going to possess it for a few years till you die or till that thing perishes how long what after that your happiness is never stable it goes like this the graph of happiness goes like this happiness suffering sorrow happiness suffering sorrow happiness suffering sorrow this is a disease we are afflicted with and it has become chronic the upanishad cars the makers of upanishads are seekers of eternal happiness they don't want this this coming and going and coming and going they don't want that they want to transcend to a level where your joy of existence your joy of being is permanent it is eternal and who we have not seen anybody who has carried his this life's wealth into the next life physical phenomenal wealth phenomenal means that which can be perceived by your five senses that wealth the phenomenal wealth you cannot carry it with you after you die you have to leave it behind whom does it belong to you possess things all your lives you stick to your things all your lives you don't have a sense of detachment 
the whole thing belongs to this Brahma because it is steeped in Brahma, it is immersed in Brahma. Your consciousness itself is immersed in Brahma. It is because you have this life, you think you are separate. So you are trying to separate something which is inseparable and causing pain to yourself. That is the second mantra. So what do I do? What do I do? So the Rishi says, there is a wonderful way to do this. He says, wish to live for a hundred years. The next mantra. Always doing the right karma, wish to live a hundred years. Then your karma will not stain you. There is no other way to save yourself. It is not yourself. It is your self. There are two different words. From the cycle of rebirth. All right. Now here, uh, we come to the beliefs of Hinduism. That is the cycle of birth and death. In Hinduism, they believe that you do not die. You are reborn and then in you transmigrate. We are going to cover this topic in details as we go ahead. But for now, what the Rushi is saying, if I'm going to be born again as a human being, which is the highest citadel of the species, of the million species on this planet, you could be born like as anyone. But if I'm going to be born as a human being again and go through the same suffering, that joy and suffering, joy and suffering, joy and suffering, joy and suffering, and then die. Again reborn, again go through the same cycle of joy and suffering, again die, again reborn, again die. I don't want that. I want eternal happiness. I want eternal stability. I want to expand the vistas of my consciousness. You see, all this has a tremendous scientific base. You may think this is mysticism. It is not. It is particle science. It is quantum physics. Do you know that if you see the electromagnetic spectrum, you Google it, Google it. Like what is the electromagnetic spectrum? There are, there are broadband waves, there are radar waves, there are microwaves, there are infrared waves, there are X-rays. So it's a huge wide spectrum. In that spectrum, Vibhyor, that is our vision. You know what is Vibhyor? The seven colors, the, the, the light, our light. It is this much, it is so tiny. If the spectrum is so wide, the world that we see is this much, this tiny, so much only. That is all we see, This our vision is so narrow. What will happen if the spectrum widens? When you, if you are born as a human again, the spectrum is going to be the same. So the Rishi says, I don't want this spectrum anymore. I want to widen my vistas. 
I want to transcend this. So to do that, there is no other way but this, doing the right karma. Now, what is doing the right karma? There, here, we have to look into the theory of karma. You have to understand this. If you're going to understand Hinduism, if you're going to understand Upanishads, if you're going to understand Gita, if you're going to understand Brahma Sutras, anything, you have to have a basic knowledge of what is the theory of karma. I, I hope you have a pen and paper and you're taking notes. You see, you are engaged in some action or other every moment of your life right now your actions fall under three categories based on when they will give results some actions give immediate results like i eat that is my action and what happens? It gives me immediate results. Like if the food is digested, I get energy and it moves uh, down my intestines. If I, if I hit someone, he hits me back. So my hitting someone, my hurting someone was an action and I got the result immediately. But there are certain actions of which you get results a delayed results like i appeared for an examination i wrote a paper and the results are going to come after one month so there are certain actions which give delayed results in this life and there are third type of actions which give results not in this life they remain pending in your account and you will get them in your next life. If they remain pending, it means that you are going to be born again because you cannot escape the results. So remember this, every single moment you breathe you are performing some action. If you're not doing anything, just sitting or you're sleeping, that is also an action because it results in something. Your sleep results in something. You're just sitting idle also results in something. You as a human being, cannot live a single moment without action which is going to result in something the result either you will get immediately or after some time in this life or if the action is such that it is not possible to get the result in this life then it will be pending in your account and when the time is right when the fixed deposit has matured, you'll get it. This is the law. This is the law of karma. Your actions could be in thought, they could be in words, or they could be physical. But you will have to bear the fruit of your action and eat it. Nobody else is going to eat it for you. You have borne the fruit, so you'll have to eat it. There is no escape from this. And there is a simple rule. Right action will give you sweet fruits and wrong action will give you bitter fruits. So good karma 
will give you good results bad karma will give you bad results if you do five good karmas five right actions you will get five sweet fruits if you do 10 wrong actions you will get 10 bitter fruits there is no set off you cannot say that i have done 10 bad things but i have done five good things so let us set it off and let me get only five bad fruits five bitter fruits no you will get the five good ones also and you will get the 10 bad ones also the only solace that you may get is that both the results may run concurrently so while you are suffering that suffering may be eased by some good happening for example there is a death in a family and you are mourning but at the same time there is a birth in the family and you are rejoicing so the pain of suffering is eased a little by that joy of a new life entering your your life this is an example but the point is that you will have to own up your result there is no set off there is no pardon You see, human laws change according to time. In different times, there were different laws. Now there are different laws. The laws change according to place. U.S. laws are different. Indian laws are different. Every nation has different laws. But the law of karma is fixed. There is no scope for any change, any amendments. any sub clauses any corollaries you cannot bribe god you just cannot bribe god you cannot bribe the law there is no scope for improvement in the law you know human laws we improve them we amend them we add corollaries to them there is no such thing here it was it is and it will be the same in all times and this law the law of karma is same for the entire human race irrespective of their class creed gender nationality religion status erudition whatsoever it is the same it is not different you cannot say to the law that oh you see i have done this sin just now but all these years 50 years of my life i have been so pious so you have to give me some concession no that is not going to happen this law does not require any fir that is for in india in indian penal code there is a thing called first information report when you go to a police station to file a complaint they write that first information report so there is no such thing in this law there are no lawyers here to help you what are who are the lawyers the priests the priests are not going to help you in india if you might have heard about these things that they do pujas and they know they, they, there is so much ritual to appease the gods to appease the planets do you think that planet is going to change its course for you no if it changes it will change for the entire humanity that planet is not going to do anything special for you you are nobody for that planet but that priest will tell you that if you spend so many rupees then i will do this puja i will do go through this ritual and all your pain will be eased there is no 
logical, scientific basis for this. If the planets are going to change their course, it will affect everybody. What happens here is inside of your psyche. But that is a different, we, we will talk about it sometime. It is a different game. These rituals do help, but how do they help? Inside of your psyche. They do not change the law of karma. So, here there are no lawyers, no witnesses. There are no judges that you can bribe. You cannot bribe those planets. You cannot bribe God. And also there are no higher courts. You know, you go to, if you lose a case in the lower court, you go to the higher court, then you go to Supreme Court of your nation. There is no such thing here. The deliverance of justice is automatic. And there is no injustice here. The justice system is immaculate. There is no scope for injustice because everything, everything is recorded on your chitta. Everything. What is chitta? Chitta is your subtle body. This is your physi physiological body. But behind this, right now I'm talking to you. What is talking to you? My mind. My mind is talking to you. My consciousness is talking to you. Right? So something is happening. Some process is going on in my consciousness, which I am sharing with you through my physical body. But there is a subtle body inside of me, the body of my consciousness. It is limited, it is vast. It has got gigabytes of storage capacity. It has got infinite storage capacity. So everything that I've done in my past lives, Till today, till this very moment has been recorded there. Has been codified there. So the law of karma does not require any proof. You yourself, your consciousness itself is the proof. Also remember, this law of karma will not seek help from any other person to give you your fruit. Remember that. My dear seekers, those of you who are familiar with Hinduism, uh, would be understanding this a little more clearly, perhaps. But let us, uh, just because they have heard this before. But the point here, which I'm trying to make is, you know, we, we love to be uh, blind in faith. We like that. Because somewhere it gives us solace. And so we start believing into things which are really not true. So God is not going to seek anybody else's help to give you the fruit of your karma. There is a misconception. Because if God does, does that, then he will be going against the very principle of Gita, which is karmanye vadika raste. That you are completely free, 100% free, every single moment of your life to choose your action, to choose your karma. 
and now if i am god and i want to give you the results of the fruit of your actions i cannot seek help from other fellow and guide him and oh okay so i want to this, this his fruit is bad you know okay fine then he has to suffer some loss so let me do one thing let me pick up this other fellow let me send this fellow to that fellow's house and make a burglary so that he will suffer some loss god doesn't do that it doesn't work that way but we believe in destiny what destiny it is not like that they are they are adi bhautik coincidences god is not in, because if god is using the other fellow to give you your fruit then he is barring the freedom of that fellow do you understand okay at present we will leave it at that nor does god give the fruit of your karma to anybody else this is typical here in india you know after a person dies they perform certain rituals they are called shraddha and there there after he dies there on the 10th day on the 12th day on the 13th day they do certain pujas so that that fellow will get good direction in his uh, post this life it is nonsense it doesn't work that fellow is gone he is already transmigrated what are you doing the moment that fellow died he is already transmigrated it is not in your power whatever you do it is for yourself it is for your solace if at all it is having any effect it is having an effect on your psyche it is not doing anything for the person who has already departed let us be logical okay we will leave it at that now people say that suppose like there is a plane crash and a 100 people die is it the result of their karma is it the fruit of their karma no we have to understand the triad i've written there the the point number 9 uh, no no this is these are these are my notes this is this is not in your write up <clears throat> the triad you understand the triad you can suffer from three uh, that that is why we said that shanti 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 three times now there is a tsunami and people suffer in the tsunami so is it their karma no it is a tsunami you can't label it on your karma if there is a fire and your property gets burned is it your karma no it is because that there is there was a fire in the neighborhood and your property got burned somebody burgles your home is it your is it your karma no there was a burglar who came and burgled but people have started because there is so much misunderstanding about the law of karma it is not like that so what it is then what should we do how should we because the mantra here is saying that kurvanne veha karmani jiji vishet shatam sama evam tvai nanyato asti na karma lipyate nare because if the fruits of karma get attached to you they actually get attached to you they are stuck with you you cannot just get rid of them you will have to eat them so what is the best way 
do not allow them to get attached to you simple how will that happen because you see as i said good karma will give good results so if you do lot of good karmas in this life in next your your next birth will be very good because the fruits if those fruits you have not eaten in this life you will have to eat them in next life so you'll get a good life you'll be born in a very good environment to good parents in money and all that okay but again as a human so again that cycle of pain and joy but now we want to transcend so the only way that is what the rishi is telling us the only way is to not allow the karmas to stick you and this is what exactly krishna has said in chapter 4 shlok 18 of gita of bhagavad gita that karmani akarmaya pashyet akarmani cha karmaya sabuddhiman manushyeshu sayukta krutsna karma krut so what this rushi is saying in ishavas upanishad that do the right karma Shlok number two of Ishavasya, always doing the right karma, wish to live a hundred years, then your karma will not stain you. Stain you means get stuck to you. The fruit will get will not get stuck to you. There is no other way to save yourself from the cycle of rebirth. There is no other way to transcend. So many people come to me, you know, and say, so. we don't want to come back we don't want to come back so it doesn't work that way you are going to come back if the fruits are stuck to you you are going to come back so krishna has said akar karmani akarma yah pashit now we come to the core of the subject what is your intent what is your desire behind your karma if that karma is only for yourself then you will have to eat the fruit yourself but if i plant an apple tree and i decide that i need one apple per day the rest of the apples the rest of the fruit i am growing but it is for everybody all my brethren then the fruit will go to them your fruit you will eat you will consume it will pass through your intestine and the result is over but if you go keep holding things then the fruits will be attached to you this is what patanjali has meant by a parigraha non holding we are going to talk about that patanjali has given 10 tenets of karma there he is he has called them yama and niyama they are to guide your karma they and see what is the gita shloka what is he saying karmani akarma yah pashyet akarma means non karma non karma means non non fruit bearing karma it will not bear fruit so the one who sees akarma in karma which means that one who does all his karmas with selflessness because you see that that shloka in gita is very misunderstood Kar, karmanne vadikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana it it people translate it as ma phaleshu kadachana means don't expect the fruits 
It is not that. How can you not expect the fruits? If you do something, the fruits, if you plant an apple tree, the apples are going to grow. That is not the meaning. The meaning is that don't expect the entire fruit, apple uh, uh, fruits for your own self. My hunger is of one apple. I'm so happy with one apple for the day. One apple a day, apple in a day, apple a day. Right? Keeps the karma away. That is the only way. Karmani akarmaya pashed, the one who sees non action, inaction. Akarmani cha karmaya. And the one who sees action in non action. He sees action in non action and non action in action. That is what Krishna has said. It is a little confusing, but it's just a play of words. Sa buddhiman manusheshu. He is the intelligent one. That is what Krishna is saying in Gita. He is the intelligent human being. Sa yuktaha. And this fellow, the one who does this, karma. Krutsna karma krut. That is, this is the karma of this Ishavasya Upanishad. Kurvan Nevehada. So doing the wish to live for a hundred years. What is he saying in the first shloka? That this everything, Ishavasya midam sarvam yatken jajaktyam jagat, this entire manifestation is immersed in the Lord. Enjoy it. But it is constantly in a flux. You are changing. It is changing. So don't get attached to it. Enjoy it with an attitude of attachment, of attitude of detachment. Detachment means share the apples. Let them be for the proletariat. With selflessness. Rejoice, enjoy. And then in this second shloka, he says that how would you do it? By selflessness. Because this holding, this attachment is 100% going to repeat the cycle of birth and death and keep on repeating. So my dear friends, uh, we will stop here today. I think I've given you enough material to contemplate to think. Now, you have to uh, gi give me, I, we have already, over time, we, are, uh, we have crossed the limit, but I want just three to four minutes of your time more for meditation. What are we going to meditate upon? I'll tell you one fascinating thing. A fasc I'll give you a fascinating object to meditate upon. See, or for the last one hour, you, you think you're listening to me and I'm face to face with you and you're looking at me. You're wrong. You're not looking at me directly. You're not listening to me directly. But my image, my talk first is being reflected on the mirror of your consciousness inside and you are looking into that mirror. So you are looking at my reflection. You cannot see me directly. Understand this. This is very deep. But you have to understand. Whatever you perceive around you is first 
reflected in the mirror of your chitta. It is a mirror. Everything is reflected in that mirror. Everybody's mirror is different. Everybody's mirror is different. That is why everybody is perceiving me differently because I am reflected in individual mirrors. So individual mirrors are different. Right? But when that mirror is clear, when there is no reflection, then what is seen? In, have you ever seen a mirror which has no reflection? No, you can't see it because mirror means reflection. But suppose, imagine that all the reflections from your own personal mirror have are removed. What will it be? That is the pure consciousness. It is the pure consciousness. So, we will meditate, all of us, just for two to two, three minutes till I ring, the, I'm going to ring this bell, till we, I ring the bell. Everybody sit upright. Close your eyes. Sit relaxed. Sit upright, align your spine. Relax your facial muscles. Relax the region of your upper lip that, that will relax your facial muscles. Relax the skin on your forehead. Allow it to descend down towards your eyebrows. Relax your temples, the skin on the temples particularly. Relax it. Sit absolutely still. That stillness will create a soft rhythm in your breath. Like a lullaby. Enjoy that rhythm. Your eyes are gently closed. The upper eyelid has dropped gently over the lower eyelid like two petals. Your vision has turned inside. You're looking behind your eyes. And there is the mirror with no reflection. It is crystal clear. It is pure. You can experience, you can feel, you can see its luminance. The light. That is the light of your clear consciousness. Pure. Without any stain. Stay with it. Because that is the true you.
You open your eyes. Okay. You can unmute yourself. If you wish to talk, talk. If you don't wish to talk, don't talk. This was beautiful. We don't know what is uh, less or what is more now. Like one apple a day is enough for me, but um, should I not store five apples or hundred is too much, but how much is too much? <laughs> you have to take a call on that, Nikila. You see, you know, this is the problem with the world today. Every one of us, each one of us wants the world to be a better place, right? Yes. But we don't, we don't follow the tenets which have been given to us. Yep. Believe me, what the world needs today is the yama and niyama. We'll talk about it next time. What we, the world needs is yama and niyama. So simple, so basic, so fundamental. But we don't, we aspire for good things. But we, we will not make changes necessary for those good things. This Rushi is so, he, and you know, these, these, these Rushis were very blunt. They did not spare. They, there was, there is no flowery language is not used. They're point blank. They call a spade a spade. Mm. So it is your call. You decide. Because it is your journey. It is a subjective journey. So you decide whether you want one apple, you are happy with five apples, how are you going to store those apples? You can, you can design certain way, wherein you will also get your apples, your needed apple, but at the same time, you will not be holding anything, any apples. Because holding is a sin. Holding is stealing. Holding is stealing because you are holding against someone's needs. And whom does it belong to? The Rushi in the very first sloka he has said, Ma Gruda Kasiswitana. Whom does it belong to? It belongs to Brahma. We have all burgeoned from that Brahma. We are all brethren. Whom are we fighting with? Whom are we holding against? Patanjali is so practical. You know, Patanjali's sutras is a workbook of life. It is no use studying Gita because Gita is theory. If you want to live Gita, you have to live the Yoga Sutras. It is a workbook. It is a work manual to put Gita into your life. Yeah. So we have to decide. I have to take my call. Uh, yes, yes, Swati, you want to say something? I was just going to make a comment on what Nikhila was asking that during this pandemic, when things started getting into lockdown, we saw how yeah. people were holding eight sanitizers when they needed only one bottle of sanitizer. They were yeah. holding tons of toilet paper. So that's a sin, not letting other people have it. Yeah. And we, and we expect spiritual wisdom. And we expect spiritual advancement. How will it work? But then we are human beings, you know. So what we can do, Nikhila, is we can spread the word, we can share the word with, with people. 
and when more and more like minded people will come together automatically things will start changing yeah that's true um i keep um reading and thinking about simple living um and uh, even though i know that um owning um like 40 sarees or 100 sarees is a sin but where do you draw the line right um i want one saree for one occasion another one for something else and so i collect them and uh, i don't know where to stop so that that applies to a lot of things i just took the saree as an example but yeah yes yes i understand i understand sir when is speaking here yeah milin i think milin ji is want to say something yeah i got lost in that uh, mail milin you want to say yeah, something yeah. yeah but i feel that it's yes, a, it is the chetan man that actually makes the mischief because that is where the chanchal or whatever you call we are not steer so we flirt from one thought to another one one uh, aspect of our life to another and as long as the chetan man is not steer the avchetan man will not get the fruits of that you know it's also that is where the, again the subset that is, theory that of karma again very true very true milen subset theory of karma that is where again patanjali comes in picture that is where again patanjali comes in picture because he said the very second sutra of asana sthira sukham asanam sthirata yogas chitta vritti nirodha very first sutra absolutely this flickering this uh, variegated mind this mercurial mind which is not stable so we have to step you you said it milin very correctly that the stability of mind is essential for us that is why patanjali is first sutra yoga chitta vritti nirodha i wanted to ask one more if are you done milin ji did want to yeah, enter yeah. okay uh, i am pretty sure you are going to touch upon this during the eight classes maybe i am getting ahead of the game but when you said if the fruits of karma get attached to you i mean you have to eat them eat the fruits when they are attached to you so the goal There's is no not escape. the goal is to not let these fruits get attached to you so are we talking about the sanskaras the impressions the karma shay in that sense you are saying the not let the fruits get attached to you what is karma shay karma shay is reserve ashay means reservoir mm-hmm. so it is a reservoir it is a bank right So is that what so you are talking about? So they are all pending. Right? All yeah. fruits, see, all the fruits are pending. They are all pending, but there is a way to not allow them to ripen at all. Before they ripen, they can be burned. There is a way. Mm-hmm. We are going to come to that later. That is the sanchit karma. But to karma. begin with, <laughs> yes, Milan. that is the sanchit karma that is the carry forward that you come with which cannot be erased yeah yeah now. exactly exactly yeah and in a, that is where astrology is sloka hai gnanani sarva karmani bhasma sat kurute right so krishna has said that in gita we will come to that but to begin with to begin with let's begin with non holding no can we do that secure your life by all means because that is your duty in the first shloka i said play bunjita enjoy rejoice do enjoy live full life so secure your life but then after that what how long i mean you are going to keep on securing keep on securing keep on securing keep on securing and then you are going to die before you can enjoy it there is a very thin line between security awareness and greed there is a very thin line what would you call security i would call greed what i would call greed you would call security 
exactly because my mirror, I, my mirror uh, is different and your mirror is different correct correct but then we are not talking out about the reflections in the mirror our mirrors are the same the reflections are different okay i agree we have been having yeah. those reflections for years together we are in for the form of deep grooves we are in the form of deep grooves in our genetic system so i tend to think negatively many a times because there's a deep groove there in those are the kleshas a... which make us think like that millions yes yes, yes avidya I mean... asmita raga dvesha vinivesha ha klesha ha this is patanjali yes. again you cannot escape patanjali everything revolves around the sutras he he knew what he was talking about from where do these negative thoughts come why do they come what is their source the source is belief system you see how the thing works you you are you are facing certain consequences which you don't like the consequences which you are facing is the result of your actions from where did the actions come actions are the result of your emotions from where do the emotions come emotions come from your thoughts always thoughts come first then emotions from where do thoughts come they come from your core belief system which is which is laden by kleshas so you see so we tell so easily we tell people are baba why, why are you behaving like this don't behave like this this is not good for you change your action he how will he change his action he cannot do that if he has to change his action which is wrong then he has to change the emotions which are dysfunctional because behind a wrong action there are dysfunctional emotions behind dysfunctional emotion there are dysfunctional thoughts and behind dysfunctional thoughts there is a core irrational belief which is laden with kleshas so unless the texture of your kleshas change your thoughts are not going to change there was a time with me in my life where when my mind was totally full of negative thoughts i always used to think negatively but then my guru guru ji and my gurus helped me patanjali helped me sutras helped me everything has the scriptures helped me and then that when the core belief when the irrationality starts turning into rationality when the core belief when the texture of kleshas changes in your belief system the thoughts begin to change emotions begin to change actions begin to change and naturally results begin to change so reboot and reprogram yes that's a very difficult okay thing. my dear friends thank you thank you so, very much shall we stop here yeah thank you very much Thank It was you. wonderful, wonderful session. Thought, thought provoking. We have a lot to digest for one week and read and think. And you see these Upanishads; they are all mantras. They are called mantras. And what is the etymology of mantra? Mananat trayate iti mantram means mananat means contemplation, chintan, contemplation on the mantra. Trayate. means it will carry you it will carry you like a baby you know to safety that is mantra that the ability to all right thank you sir thank so, you very much my dear thank friends you. my beloved seekers bye bye see you next week thank you thank bye you.